Hello everyone. Welcome to Tuesday, the chill lecture before the Friday not so chill lecture. Welcome. Happy International Women's Day. Um, pretty exciting. I think in the announcement this week I have included, if you want to listen to a short podcast, a bit of history of women in computing, um, which I think is quite interesting. Um, and, you, you know, most most um, of the people in computing when it first started were actually women to start with, and then um, something changed. And that's what the podcast is all about. And now we're coming back, I think, maybe. It's still quite not not that much of an enrollment big but it's it's coming back slowly. Um, all right. Uh, so hello, hello, and welcome. I guess uh, a lot of you have seen that assignment one is out. Um, I'll just have a quick chat about it, but mostly we're going to have a love uh, a love stream. <laughs> I meant to say a live stream. Oh well, there you go. I feel very strongly about this assignment, obviously. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> all right, everything's all right. A love stream is on live stream. Now I'm going to keep calling it a love stream. <laughs> all right, so last week we talked about um, style. We talked about style and working neatly as you go. And I can't wait to have a look at your assignment zeros and to make sure that you're all um, doing some lovely neat coding and that everything is readable and uh, very easy to see and understand. We also talked a little bit about functions, which we're going to keep on doing today and from now on, really. Uh, we uh, basically talked about functions as a way to separate chunks of code for reuse to help segment the problem um, and to help break down the problem as well and to improve the readability of your code. And we also got introduced to arrays, which was really exciting. Um, your first taste of arrays, don't worry, uh, more arrays are coming. Um, so a lot of exciting stuff. Um, so arrays, remember, are homogeneous collections, which means that they store the same type of variable in a collection. And today, assignment one kickoff. Woohoo! Um, we'll talk about the assignment one very briefly. Then we'll recap some basic arrays. We'll move into arrays of s arrays. And then we're going to put it all together in a harder problem. And I'll bring in array of structs as well so that you can see what array of structs do as well. Um, someone's asked on the stream, when do we get our marks for assignment zero back? We aim for a two week turnaround time um, and we will let you know if that is not possible or if something is running late, but we always aim for a two week turnaround time. Um, however, it's a very large course as well. So sometimes we do go a few days behind that. Um, okay, so let's, 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 let's kick off, I guess. Uh, where's the code? Uh, the same place it always is. Tom, could you please post the link in the chat where the code is? Uh, we also have oh, Tom's linked assignment one in, um, which is very exciting. Thank you, Tom. And now we're going to link in the lecture code and yay, assignment one. Um, fantastic. So assignment one is basically CS Explorer. Um, you explore the far flung corners of the CSC building whilst dealing with monsters. Um, and if you have uh, if you have been on campus and you have been to the K-17 building, there's a lot of dusty corners. So lots of things to explore, I guess. Um, so what are the aims of the assignment? Assignment, uh, apply, you, we're going to test that you can apply arrays and two dimensional arrays, which is arrays off arrays. We're going to do more of those today in solving problems. As always, 20% of your mark is all about style. So I think that's the easiest marks you can get. It's really just coding nicely and neatly. Um, good variable names, good indentation, you, using functions and so on and so forth. We are actually also testing that you are using functions in your code and breaking things down to use functions. And practice some skills in debugging code. And we will do a lecture on debugging as well. Um, we'll do an hour of a lecture next week on debugging. And then we'll also have a special bonus stream about debugging as well running. Um, and yeah, it will, this assignment will absolutely, definitely, without a doubt, test your skills in patience. Um, and you, as you will search for issues and as you kind of go through it, again, I want to say, please, 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 um, do not, you know, get discouraged in any way whatsoever. Um, please persevere. Coding can be very hard. Um, and sometimes, you know, one thing will throw you right off. 
take regular breaks, hydrate, um, you know, have snacks, but definitely take regular breaks. So the assignment will have four stages, uh, which means that each stage will ramp up with difficulty, just like the lab exercises. Um, and we have stage one and stage two are one dots. Um, so hopefully you can attempt both of those stages and you can get a really large chunk off the marks um, by doing stage one and stage two. Then stage three is a two dot um, affair. So you'll be able to get some more marks with that. Uh, a lot of marks actually for the assignment. And then the last bit will be dedicated to stage four, which is a three dot exercise um, so it kind of lets you know what difficulty level uh, each of the stages is. And also uh, it, it lets you know, you know, what's going on, what, what you feel you should be attempting and what you maybe can leave because you don't feel like the time payoff is enough for the mark payoff. Um, I suggest going through all the stages chronologically. Don't skip stages. Just go through it one by one. Um, and, um, and you know, there you have it. Uh, someone's asked a great question. Will we have learned everything for the whole assignment by the end of this week? Indeed, you would have. So uh, even after today, you can probably do uh, some of stage one. Actually, almost all of stage one. Yeah, you can do almost all of stage one after today. Okay, the live stream, which I keep calling the love stream, is going to go through the assignment in more detail. It's going to break it down um, and I will be answering questions in the chat. Um, the lovely Anusha will be running the live stream because she uh, had this idea for this assignment and uh, she, she, it, it is her baby, um, this, uh, this context and this whole monster hunting. So uh, there we go. So she'll be going through it. Uh, Wednesday, three o'clock. Uh, the link for the live stream is just there. I've also put, uh, you know, the QR code for it um, because everything in life is QR coding right now. And the link will be recorded. Uh, sorry, the link, the live stream will be recorded. So don't worry if you can't attend, it will be recorded and we will make it available for you afterwards as well. Um, how many lines should this assignment be? Assuming your code is somewhat efficient. Oh. Six hundred? No, four hundred. Maybe four hundred lines of code. Tom solved it. You see, he was he was one of our testers. Um, this Tom that's sitting next, Tom Killingback. He's the one. He he was our tester. He solved it once, and he he did it in four hundred lines of code. No, more than that. Now he's doubting himself. Oh well. Um, it says the live stream starting at five p.m. on YouTube. Oh no, that's Tom's fault. Um, he'll fix that now. That was his, that was, no, it's not 400 lines. He's lying to you. He will, he will tell you how many lines in a second. He'll type it into the chat. Um, we've had three people solve it. So I should have a look at how many lines they solved it in and how many lines I solved it in. <laughs> no, let's not do that. Okay, let's do it. So let's recap. Um, and then we can, and then we can talk more about the assignment uh, later as well. Yeah. So obviously also this assignment is going to have more lines of code because you're also going to be breaking things up into functions. Okay. And it's, it's very much step based. So each, each like section, each section of the assignment is really its own little function. Basically, don't worry. Less lines does not mean exactly as Tammy said, less lines does not mean less or more work. Okay. You can, you know, I can write something in two lines or I can write it in 50. Um, exactly the same thing, solving exactly the same problem. So it's really, it's, it's not so much about lines of code. It's more about thinking things through. And I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend um, using diagrams to start with in this assignment because it really clears things up. And we're going to do a harder problem in the second part of the lecture today. And we're going to draw a diagram as well and so that we can see exactly what numbers are doing and what's happening. When is assignment one due? That's a great question. It is due in week seven on Monday at 8 p.m. So you will have the flex week um, and we will be running help sessions during flex week as well. 
Um, there is a lot of help sessions next week as well. So I strongly recommend that you start early um, and uh, you get going with it because I think if you saw with assignment zero, our help sessions get pretty busy. Uh, we've now put some extra instructions in the help session page so you can see exactly what to do um, and how to you know, get yourself into a queue and how to be seen during a help session. We'll also be handing out more fast passes during the different tutorials. Um, so hopefully that will mean we can see more of you um, and, um, and, and help more of you as well. Uh, what is Flex Week for? Flex Week is for catching up, I think, yeah. Uh, basically we do not, any lecture that we give in week six uh, is like a bonus lecture. It's not examinable, it's not new content that you will need for the course. Um, it's more like a bonus guest lecture for interest. Um, there are no tutes, there are no labs, there is nothing running in week six. It's your time to catch up. It's your time to uh, work on you know, the previous five weeks and work on the assignments that you have um, and ask questions and stuff. Uh, someone said, will there be an assignment too? Of course there will be an assignment too. Um, there will be an assignment too. You'll have about, I think we're hoping for a two day break. Um, be between assignment one being due and assignment two. Um, and that will hopefully, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And yep, yeah, so someone said, if you go to the course outline, it lists all the times that we release things and all the times that we have things due and stuff. So uh, it's all detailed in there. Okay, so let's, um, let's do it. Yeah, two day break, so lucky. Hopefully the sun's out so you can actually enjoy those two days. Uh, well, you know, the, in the last running of the course, and this is on a tangent, but in the last run of the course, uh, you were doing weekly tests. So I think an assignment is, uh, well, I, I'm hoping an assignment is better uh, than those weekly tests. Um, but we'll see what you think. Um, please do provide feedback. Um, and we will take it on board as well. All right, uh, let's get going. Okay, so let's do arrays. Okay, so a recap of arrays. Um, they are a collection all of the same type. They're declared by using a type, a name, and a size of the array. Um, and you can easily access individual elements of an array by using an index, which we will be doing a lot today. And uh, indexing starts at zero, moves through until size minus one of the array. And our arrays go hand in hand with while loops that make it easy to work through an array. All right, I see some more questions. Okay, let me tell you this. There's, there was still a, two assignments <coughs> before in the last term and the weekly tests were like lab uh, exercises that you had to do in a setting that was slightly timed. So um, assignment zero was what replaced the weekly tests. Okay, I'll let Tommy, and now you're called Tommy, I'm sorry, because I was saying Tammy and then I said Tommy, I'm sorry. Now I'll, <laughs> I'll let Tom and Tammy uh, reply to any more uh, things about, um, about any of the content on the chat, but it's also all in the course outline. Okay, uh, maybe I should just start calling you Tommy and then there's no issues with me <laughs> mistaking you for the other Tom. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look. So for example, we have an array and we've declared it as um, int ice cream consump. So this tells us the type that the array is storing. So it's telling us that it's got all ints inside it. Um, this over here is the name of the array. The square brackets is what tells C that you are wanting to have an array. So you're going to have this lovely array. And then this number seven is the number of items. So the size of your array. Okay. So it's not, uh, it, you can have any size you want. Um, and you have to give a size when you are declaring. Um, so you, you, you really, you need to have some sort of size. So usually if you don't know how many items you want to have in there, what you do is you give a very large size when you create the array. And what that means is you end up wasting a lot of that array as well. So um, then to actually initialize the array, you use the curly brackets here 
and then you just place the numbers inside the array. So I've got seven numbers in there that are separated by commas. So this array holds seven integers. Um, so each one of the things in the array is an int. Um, remember that the indexing of the array starts at zero and goes up until size minus one. So which is seven minus one, which is six. And then I just load up the numbers in there. So three goes in there, two in there, one in there, two, one, three, and five. So that's how an array is working. So I could have uh, an array of, well, it's, it's a bit different when I declare it and initialize it like that. And I'll show you how to initialize an array with all zeros as well in it. Um, but usually if, yep, don't worry, we're going to get to it. In one of the examples, I use an array of all zeros to show you how it's possible to initialize something as well. Okay. So, um, oh goodness. Yeah. Okay. I keep forgetting that the pencil doesn't rub out. Okay. Let me rub it out. All right. So you can access any element in the array. Uh, by referencing its index. Okay. So what that means, remember again, indexing starts from zero, not from one. So if you access an index that does not exist, you will get an error. Um, usually that happens when someone tries to access an index seven in, in this type of array, because there's only seven items, which means that indexing starts at zero, um, at si starts at zero, ends at six. So if I wanted to access this third element, um, in this array, what I would do is I would ask for an index of two because an index of two, um, actually gives me a An index of two here gives me the third element of the array. So index two is this index here is the third number here and it's this one in here. So that is accessing an index. And the best way to really practice arrays is to use them a lot in a coding situation, which we will do now. Um, someone's like, can I force an array to start from one by not initializing any values into array zero? Well, uh, you not re I mean, you can, you can start it at one if you want, but that means you'll have uh, one cause you can't go up until the size of your array. Um, so you'll still have an array zero, it'll just be empty, but, but you won't be able to go all the way to the end. So indexing has to start at zero. Okay. Let's, let's do a little problem and then we can, we can practice our array and you can ask me, uh, questions as well in the chat. Tom's holding his head in his hands. I don't know what's going on. Um, okay. Someone saying, can you scan F values in there and get a result that is a numbered element? You can scan F and we're about to, we're about to scan F into that array. So we're going to do a problem. Uh, user is asked to enter 10 numbers. We will then go through these numbers and find the lowest number and output what the lowest number is to the user. Okay. Oh, that was exciting. I don't know what happened there. All right. Uh, is my head in an okay place? Yes, it is. I might, yeah, no, that's good. Okay, let's do it. So this program here, allows the user to input 10 numbers and then finds the smallest number out of these. Okay. And, uh, or someone wants me to make a string. You, you're going to see a string next week. Don't worry. It's coming. Strings are coming. I don't, yeah. Uh, on Friday, something is coming that you're not going to enjoy all that much, but I'm warning you now to prepare you. Uh, okay. So let's have a look. A user is asked to enter 10 positive numbers. We will then go through these numbers and find the lowest number and output what the lowest number is to the user. All right. What do we need? And we're going to write a function, I think as well for it. Okay. So let's see, what do we need to do to solve this problem? Okay. So first of all, we need to enter in 10 positive numbers. So we need to take, um, we need to take, we need to somehow take from terminal 10 numbers. So we need to use what to take from terminal 10 numbers. Yep. 
Yep, scan F in a while loop. Excellent. Well done. Okay, so we want to scan F in a in while loop to take in 10 numbers. Okay, I like that. Excellent. What do we want to do then? Excellent. Then we want to actually find the lowest of those numbers. Where should we store the 10 numbers? Should we store them into a 10 variables? How should we do it? I mean, I don't I don't think we should store them into a variable, uh, obviously, because we're doing arrays. I think that's a great place. To, yes, well done. An array is a great place to store them into. Store in an array and then find the lowest of the numbers. And then we have to output the lowest number. Okay, excellent. Um, okay, so starting out, include STDIO in main. I've got a line here, which is like not particularly helpful. So, okay, we need to scan in, we need to store in an array. So we need to declare an array. Okay, I mean, hypothetically, yes, someone has said it's correct. I don't really need to store anything. Okay, because I could just, I could just, check the numbers as we go, as we're entering them in. But for the sake of this question, I'm going to store them in an array and then use them. Okay, so first of all, we want to declare an array. The array is going to store some ints in it. So it's going to be off type int. Um, and I don't know, I'm going to call it numbers um, because creative names and I needed to store 10 things. So I'm going to make it size 10. So often you'll see that this will be a hash define a size because the size does not change after you run your program at runtime. So we can say, um, you know, we can call it max number and say it's 10. And that means we can declare our array um, by using the hash define in there. Okay, now uh, one thing I haven't shown you is what happens if I do this. Okay, so you know that curly brackets means that it's going to initialize the array, but what are we doing? What does it mean to have a zero in there? What that means is you're going to place a zero in every single uh, element of that array. Okay, so it means I've initialized it all to zero. Okay, so now I have an array to store things into. Now I want to run a while loop. So the first thing I need is an index because I'm going to be working with arrays. So that means I want to keep track of the index uh, of my array as I scan the numbers into each element of the array. So what I have now after I've declared and initialized this thing here is I'm going to have an array of 10 things. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, the indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I've just initialized everything to zero. So this is what my array looks like um, at this point in time. Okay, now I've just done a um, int i is equal to zero. So I've got an index in here and I've put it to zero, which means that I'm ready to access the first element of this array. So I'm ready to access this, this element over here, this zero. Okay, so uh, then what will we do next? Okay, that's not helpful when there's an arrow and then I move move out from it. Okay, now let's do our while loop. So while something is happening, I want something else to happen and I want to I++ at the end of it. Okay, what will I be compared to? Okay, perfect. Yep, our max number. So we want to compare. So whilst i is less than max number, uh, we're going to do something in here. We're going to scan f into it, into numbers i. Well done. Okay, and then I'll answer this question that Tom has on the board. Okay, so scan f. Uh, you know what? That's really, why don't we prompt the user as well? So let's print f. We're going to say, please enter a number. 
and close bracket and then we're going to scan in that number and a few of you have said don't forget your ampersand and we're going to scan it into the array which is called numbers at index i so currently it's going to be at zero and then i plus plus will increase and we will move on to the first one and then i plus plus will increase and we'll keep scanning and moving into the next 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 and next Okay, so Tom's written a really good question on the board and someone's, I guess, asked it in the chat. Why can't we have an array? Why can't we have dynamic array sizing? So why can't we just not predict it at all? Okay, uh, and just, you know, whatever fills in, that's, that's what happens and that's what we kind of leave it as. So one of the basic reasons for it is, is that at runtime, memory is allocated to an array, okay? And the way you allocate memory to an array in the computer is that each one of these boxes is consecutive. So they are right next to each other, which means that that's how we're able to reference them. So if in memory, this is, I don't know, at space 000, this is going to be at space 004, this is going to be at space 008 and so on and so forth. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, Tom's right. I'm right in the, I'm right in the camera. Sorry. Okay. So what that means is, is that you, when you've declared an array, it can't be dynamic because you, you need to give it every space, every element of that array has to be consecutively located in terms of memory, which means that you need to know how big it is to start with because you need to create enough memory space to house that. Okay, and that's part of the reason why you can't have this variable variable situation happening. C does not let you have variable arrays. There is, you can, you can call some more memory for an array, but you're calling it based on the size of the array as well. It's not, we will learn another data structure that will let us fill it in as we need it and use memory as we need. Okay, uh, and then there was another question. What it, oh, it kind of relates to the first question. So what if I don't know the max size? So usually you'll see this weird situation where you don't know the max size. You'll see something that will have define max number 1000, right? And then that's it. So you create this array that you think will be big enough to house everything. Um, and then you might only use 10 things in it. Okay. And then that's, that, that, that's just, it's just, it's a waste of space. And yes, someone has said you are, you will learn about a linked list starting in week seven. And that's going to solve that problem for us because it, it uses this dynamic memory allocation, which means that we only use memory as we need it, as opposed to just taking large chunks and hoarding it. Um, so, um, don't worry. Um, for now, you just need to know that if you declare an array, you need to know the size of that array. And if you don't know the size of that array, you need to give it a large enough number that you think will accommodate uh, what you need it to do. Okay, and okay, so we've scanned into the array. Someone said, could I please declare? Yes, okay. So because I wanna scan into the array, I use an index uh, and whatever the boxes of my array are indexes, okay? So I index the numbers of how to kind of access the different elements of the array. Now indexing in an array always starts at zero, okay? So I start my int i is equal to zero. I started at the first index of the array. So I started in this box over here, which means that what I'm doing is I'm going to first put something in here. And then when I increase my i, it's gonna to move to this element over here. And then when I increase my i, it's gonna to move to this element over here and so on and so forth. So that's what the int i is equal to zero is. Um, okay, so we've got our while loop. The while loop is working, um, fantastic. And now we really want to have a lowest number. So we've scanned our numbers in, let's say. We've got this beautiful array um, and we're going to use a function to make that call. So let's have an int lowest and we're going to have a function called lowest number. And what do you think I need to give the function to calculate the lowest number? OK, 
Okay, someone's asked why is it index... Okay, why is it this this thing here? Okay, I'll just quickly explain it whilst I wait. Okay, so if index is equal to zero, what that means is you're putting something inside numbers at index zero. So whatever was entered goes into this index here. And when the counter increases, that's going to be that's going to be index at one. Okay, which means that you're putting something in here. Because you're storing it in an array, you are actually uh, you're specifying uh, where in that array it's going to go into. Okay, yep, so we need to give it the array because that's how it's going to, it's going to go through the numbers in that array. So the way you pass an array to a function, and we're going to learn more about this on Friday, but so just take my word for it right now, is you just give the name of the array, okay? Okay, so in this case it's numbers, so that's what we pass on, um, we pass on to our lovely um, function. Okay, so if we now have a function, let's say, well, I've already kind of called it something, haven't I? I've called it lowest number. Okay, what is going to be my input to the function? You've already told me what the input is. It's an array of numbers. Okay, and what is going to be the output of the function? What do we reckon is going to be the output of the function? Yep, an integer, yep, a lowest number. So it's going to be an int. Okay, excellent. So let's let's write our function. So the output is an int, so I'm going to say int to start with. The function is called lowest number, so the name of the function goes in here. And what we have said is we're giving it an array of numbers. Uh, we're giving, oopsie, capital letters. Okay, so we're giving it a lovely array over here. And now we're ready to calculate our lowest number. Okay, so how are we going to calculate our lowest number? What do we reckon? What do you reckon should be our um, algorithm, I guess? How do you reckon we'll calculate it? If we have an array of numbers, and let's say we're entering in, okay, uh, well, that didn't go as planned. The pen's gone, the pen's uncalibrated itself. Okay, let's say, for example, okay, I've entered the numbers 3, 4, 6, 7, I don't know, 1, 2, 11, 3, 5, 9. Literally making these numbers up, okay? They don't mean anything. Yeah, okay. So someone's saying, if the current number is less than the previous number, then the current number is the lowest. Rinse and repeat. I agree. What should I start with? What will I make my lowest number to start with? Yeah, while loop that goes through every element. Excellent. Yeah, and what should I be, what should be my... Yeah, excellent. So the first element. So I want to make my lowest number this one, and then I'll compare each one. And if there is a lower number, I'll set that as the lower as the lower number. Um, now, someone said they've lost me on line forty-eight. Uh, why is the input int number of the max number? Okay, my input is an array, so this says that I am inputting an array in here. The array is of type int. The array is called number, and this is the size of the array. Okay, this is. This int over here is the return type. So that means I'm outputting an int out. But over here, this is my input. But it's not an int, it's an array of ints. Okay. All right, so let's, let's put it into use what we've just said to do. Okay, so we've got, and this is, okay, I'm going to say I've got an int lowest number. And we said that that would be a good idea to make it equal to the very first thing. So I'm going to make it equal to whatever is the first thing in my array at index zero. Okay, excellent. Okay, now to go through a while loop, I'm going to need an index again. And I'm going to set that index to zero again so that I start at the first element of the array. Okay, now let's do my while and i is less than max number
And here I will do an if statement. So someone has, I think, uh, so if whatever is sitting inside my array, so if whatever is sitting in my array number at index i as I go through it, and the index i is here and it will keep changing when I reach this line here. So if whatever is sitting inside my array at index i is less than the lowest number, okay, then what happens is it becomes the lowest number. Okay, so it becomes the new lowest number. And I'm going to write it out for you. This is a common thing to do searching through things uh, and using this kind of algorithm. So we will write it out in a second. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to do that and then, oh, I forgot to return anything. So let me return and I'm going to return an int. So I'm going to return, oops, lowest number because that's my int, that's what I'm interested in. So then the lowest number will go over here. Okay, so let's have a look through what, what actually happens in our piece of code. Let's, let's break it down so we can see what actually happens. Okay, I'm going to do that, go to the pen. Okay, so, no, we haven't prototyped the function yet. I forgot to do that still. It's going to happen. Okay, let's have a look. Let's go through this piece of code. Okay, I'm going to start at this line here. Int lowest number is equal to the first thing. Okay, so that means my lowest number is going to be equal to the first thing in the array. So whatever's sitting inside the array at index 0. This is what's sitting inside the array at index 0. So that means on this line it's equal to 3. I'll go to the next line. My i is now going to be equal to 0. Excellent. Now I enter into the while loop and I check is my i, which is equal to 0, is it less than the max number, which is equal to 10? Yes, it is, which means that I enter into the while loop. So now I move into my if statement, and I ask if whatever is sitting in my array at index i, so my array number at index i, which is currently equal to 0, is it less than lowest number? Okay, my lowest number is 3. And what's sitting inside here, it's 3 as well. Okay, this is not true, so I'm not going to do this. So that means from here I'm going to go to here, and I'm going to increase i by one more. Okay, so that means i is now equal to 1. Excellent, I'll go back to my while loop and I'll check again. Okay, is 1 less than 10? Yep, it is. Okay, great. That means I'm going to go in my while loop again and I'm going to check if whatever's sitting in the array at index 1, that means this number here, is 4 less than the lowest number. The lowest number is still 3. Is 4 less than 3? No, it's not. So I'm not going to do what's inside this if statement. I'm going to increase my i again. Okay, so now my i becomes... So now my i is equal to 2. Okay, that means I'm over here at this index. And I check again, is 2 less than 10? Yes, it is. I go inside the while loop. My if statement is now, what is sitting inside the array at that index? It's the number 6. And is it lower than the lowest number, which is 3? No, it's not. Okay, great. Then I don't do that. I really shouldn't have left it so much to write number. I'm going to swap these two numbers around so that we're not here forever. Okay, that's going to be 1 and that's going to be 7. Okay, great. Then I increase my counter again. i is now equal to 3, which means that I'm now here in the array. Okay, I'll check. Is 3 less than 10? Yes, it is. So that means I go inside my while loop. Now I check my if statement. Is what's sitting inside the array at index 3, which is the number 1, is it less than the lowest number, which is still 3? Uh-huh, it is less which means that I now perform whatever is inside my if statement. So that means my new lowest number is now equal to 1. Okay, so now it's equal to 1, and then I increase my index and go on to the next one, and so on and so, for so forth, okay, as I go through it. Okay, I hope, that, I hope that made it a lot more clear what's happening. Okay, let's tidy this up so that we can use it. Let me, let me actually, oops. Let me erase uh, this, so that, that's not just, and this. 
Okay, so great. Let's have a look what we can do here. Okay, what do what are we missing? So we're oops, wrong screen. Okay, so we've got put it in here, and now I think I just need to say that I want this lowest in here because this is the return number is going to be stored inside this variable here. So that means I'm going to print it out over here. Okay, someone's asking me, what's this line saying? This line is saying that I want my lowest number to start with. I'm initializing it to be the first element of the array. And then I'm going to compare it to each one. And only when I find something lower, I'll change it around. Okay, let's run it. Let's see what happens if I run it. So DCC, um, lowest number, oops, dot C, lowest number. Oh, what a mess. What have I done? Oh, I forgot to do a prototype. Okay. So, yep, let's do a prototype. So I'll just remember we need to tell C when we're doing our functions that something is coming that this function is. This function exists. It's going to be there and it's coming. Okay, so we've done that. Let's try it again. Okay, now no pro problem. So now let's run it. Lowest number. Okay, let's enter our numbers. Three, four, six, uh, one or whatever. Seven, two, eleven, two, three, nine. I don't know, four. How many numbers is that? Have I created a loop somewhere? An infinite loop? I have, haven't I? I feel like I've created an infinite loop. This is way more than ten numbers. Uh, let me have a look. I've in, I've infinity I've infinited it I've infinity oh my max number is a thousand oh my well we would be entering a thousand numbers in so super fun yeah uh, I'm not gonna do that uh, and I will show you how to get out of this uh, here we go that was fun it's because I was showing you how to do a huge okay let's do that that's much better oh no <laughs> oh no I forgot to compile it. Okay, here we go. I'm compiling it now, and now I'm running it. All right, now 10 numbers. Let's do it. Okay, 3, 4, 6, uh, 7, 1, 9, 10, 11, 2. Okay, and then the lowest number is 1 out of all the numbers I entered. So there we go. Um, that could have been more fun. Uh, could you enter a negative number as well? I could indeed. Um, I am not restricted at all. So if we enter a negative, I really should have cleaned it up. So let's do minus 1. Let's do minus 10 here. There you go. And my lowest number is minus 10. If you can see through that, um, let, me, let me help you here by doing that. So you can use negative numbers as well in there. And you can limit it, obviously, if you don't want to have negative numbers. Up to you. Okay, how is that to how is that for everyone? Uh, someone said, would it be more efficient to initialize I as one? Yes, it would be. It, it really would be. I just didn't want to confuse matters uh, and to keep changing I is equal to zero to I is equal to one. But yeah, because I've already set it to the first, I've already set my lowest number to the first element. It would be more efficient, absolutely, to have I as one in that um, in the function, because I, I don't need to compare it to itself. Uh, okay, excellent. Uh, any other, what's the purpose of int lowest number? The purpose of that is to have a function to separate out some of the code um, because we like to have functions and we like to break down our main um, function as well as we go. Okay, great. Okay, we're, we're going a bit. Okay, how's the pace? Um, Tom, can you pay? Thank you. Let me know how the pace is going, how everyone's feeling. Um, and then we're, because I'm about to move on to a, um, someone said, what would, what would happen if you put in all letters? It would, it would tell me to go away because it's looking for a scan F percent D and I'm not giving it a percent D. Um, how do you stop scan F from scanning in binary? What do you mean by that? Interesting. What do you mean? We are we are going to learn something special about um, scanf today. Again, I think 
you're probably all getting over learning special things about scanf um it's a pretty eccentric little function yeah okay let's do let's continue all right you can also have an array of structs okay so an array of structs you can have an array of anything right as long as it's all the same type so that goes you know to show you, you can also have an array of structs and that's what you'll be using in your assignment you will have an array of structs and my harder example at the end of this lecture will really help you with doing stage one and it also uses an array of structs so let's for example have the struct for a coordinate point let's say it's uh, you know struct uh, coordinate so defining it here is got an int x and an int y um, and an array of structs to declare an array of structs you simply do it the same way as you would declare anything else okay you say that it's a struct uh, you say of what type it is so struct coordinate which is what it was over here and then you give it a name so the name of it of my variable is map and I've said that it is a um, I said it's an array by having the square brackets and there's five elements in it so visually it would have five elements in it so indexing starts at zero which means it finishes at four and then it would have an int x and an int y in each one of our because each one is of type struct okay so what it means is to initialize it or put something inside it you say uh, the name of the array and at what index and then you use the same notation in that you do dot x to put inside uh, this x coordinate so you put it inside here that's your three and dot y will be uh, one as well uh, okay so excellent uh, so that's that's an array of structs we will use it in the harder example don't you worry just in case you were stressed about it we will use it okay and then you can also have an array of arrays which is basically a grid and if you remember last week we finished on a on drawing a grid was it or was it in week two when did we do a while inside a while I don't know the weeks are all blending into into one but we at some stage did a while inside a while a nested while and we created this beautiful grid of numbers um, and that's really a bit of an introduction to a two-dimensional array because it works in a similar way in that it, it creates a grid so the way to declare an array of arrays is and remember you can have an array of anything so what it means is you have you say what type it is the array name and then the first square bracket says the number of rows and the second square bracket says the number of columns so for example you'll have int array 3 5 which means that this is array of type int it is called array that's the name of it and it's got three rows and it's got five columns okay so what that means is that we have three rows rows go uh, I know that they go this way but it they go like this and columns oh my god I hate rows and columns I really do but just columns uh, at the top rows on the side basically so your rows and your columns so anything uh, so for example uh, an array with three rows has indexing 0 to 2 over here and five columns is 0 to 4 and if you need to access an element you need to really it's the same way as you access in a one dimensional um, array uh, so for example I need something at index 2 3 that means I want something to be at row 2 over here and uh, at uh, column 3 so over here is my uh, lovely index that I want that's actually incorrect my goodness <clears throat> I, I circled an incorrect one I got overexcited yeah a 3d array is possible mm. Mm. don't worry no 3d arrays here uh, okay so think of the problem last week where we tracked ice cream consumption for a week um, what if I want to do this for a month you know a week at a time kind of thing it, it, the slide yes the slide was wrong I did just say that um, yeah uh, I, I was using a different example in my head clearly sometimes I do that uh, okay so that means I would declare something of size 4 for let me correct it so that you're not confused here okay if I want something at where am I at 2 3 then I want something at 2 3 over here 
because remember how the indexing is working and we'll we'll practice it don't worry you'll see it you'll see it in action in a second okay so if I want four rows, seven columns, again, I'm creating something that looks like a grid of four rows and seven columns. But remember, the indexing is from zero to three and columns zero to six. OK, remember my while inside a while? Um, we kind of did it. Oh yeah, we did it in week two, Friday night. We said that int row is equal to zero. We it was if you remember it was a clock, so the inside second hand was uh, you know working many times. So the inside loop works many times until the outside loop ticks over one. So row is equal to zero while row is less than or equal to size. Int column is equal to zero while column is less than or equal to size. Printf the number, um, and this was a piece of code that we did in. Um, in week two, which kind of gave us a grid that looked like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or whatever else it was. Okay. So we can transfer this knowledge because if you print something like this out, that's got rows down here and it's got columns this way. So it's actually got a grid structure as well. So, and if you can read that writing, that's going to be pretty amazing. That's terrible. I'm sorry. Um, so we've already got something that lets us do a grid. So let's see how it would work with a, with an array. Where's my, I'm here. Wait. Okay, so again, 2D array initialized with size, row, column, where row is the outer loop, column is the inner loop. Okay, so let's see if we can print it out. So we're going to do a, a question. Okay, so let's say I want to have a, an array, and I'm going to call it array. Okay, and it's going to have three rows and four columns. So I'm going to declare an array. It's going to be of type int, which means it's just going to have numbers in it. It's going to be called array. It's going to have three rows and it's going to have four columns. Yeah, I think the while condition shouldn't have had an equal sign. Uh, yeah, we will. I'll fix it right now. Don't worry. Uh, okay. And I think it doesn't for my next for my array, but it does for the while loop. Okay, because ah, I know why, because our initial code, we did it from one to four. That's why it still had the equal sign and I copied it over, but I changed it to zeros without thinking that the equal sign needs to be taken away. Okay, so we've got an array. It's got three rows and three columns. Okay, you have seen me declare an array, let's say of size three and initialize it by doing curly brackets and then putting three things in here, yeah? So how do we initialize an array that has rows and columns? Okay. And so I just wanted to show you how to do that just in case. Okay. Okay. So you will have your sets of curly brackets because that's where it, uh, the array goes into, but because it's an array of arrays, okay, you're then going to have little arrays in here as well. So you're going to have more curly brackets separated by curly brackets. So if the array has three rows of four columns each, that means we're going to have three sets of curly brackets in here and then four lots of numbers in here. So what that has done is that has created something that looks like, oh, well, we're about to see it because it's going to print it out. Okay. So I won't draw it, but we're about to see it because it's going to print it out. Okay. So now let's use that same piece of code that we have done before as well to do our while inside a while. Okay. So let's initialize our row at zero. And then uh, I think it was Bill rightly pointed it out. Then that means that this shouldn't be going up to an equal sign of the number of rows because my indexing starts at zero. So whilst my row number or the index of the row is less than the number of rows, which is, uh, I said, it's going to be three 
And this feels like a really good number to hash define right now, but it's too late. I've too committed to not now. Okay. Then I want to initialize my column. And remember, we did that as well in our grid because what that means is that the column goes back to the start each time. Otherwise, it would keep going, keep going, keep going um, past the index. It would just keep increasing and nothing would happen. So when we initialize it back to zero inside our loop, that means just like the inside the seconds, they'll tick, 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 they'll go to 60 and then they'll go back to zero and my minute, hour hand will only move once, okay? So, um, so that's basically what we're doing there. And then we're gonna have our inside while loop and you're gonna get very comfortable with doing this uh, double while inside a while to traverse a two dimensional array. Okay, and then we've got four columns in here. So that means we're gonna go up until four and we're gonna print out the number. And that number is going to be stored inside the array at whatever row it is, at whatever column it is. And we will go through it. We can draw it out, don't worry. Um, okay, so we've printed it out, excellent. Now we want to increase, increment the column so that it, it goes up. And then outside, I'm going to move it to a new line so that for the next, when it moves to the next row, it's going to uh, do so on a new line. Okay, and let's increase the column. And then don't worry, we're gonna take a break in a, in a short little tick. Okay, so now we have a piece of code that should hopefully print out. Let's see what it does and if it does anything. Let's hope it does. Well, at least it compiles. Okay, and let's print it. Um, you can't see it, it's printed it, but it's also, uh, this is in the way. Did not mean to do that. Here we go. Okay, so it's printed out. One, two, three, four. It moved lines five, six, seven, eight, and it's moved lines to nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, now, obviously I don't have any spaces or anything happening, so it's not going to do anything. Um, but it's going to mean that I'm able to traverse through the whole two dimensional array and I'm able to, you know, actually access every element of it. Um, would it matter if you set row is equal to one and then use the less than or equal? It does matter because that means that you would miss whatever is sitting inside the zeroth index. Oh, no, someone has already answered it, apologies. So what it looks like is this, okay? I'll draw it and then we'll take a break, okay? Let's, we've got our, uh, how many rows? Three rows and four columns. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Okay, so when I make my row is equal to zero, that's this one here, so that, and column is equal to zero, I'm in here, I'm at number one, okay? So then when I move my column over, I'm still at row is equal to zero, but I'm gonna to move to here, to here, and to here. So I need to have it less than three because this index over here, zero, one, two, three, sorry, the columns were over here, and these index zero, one, and two. So that's why I never have the equal to if I start counting at zero to, um, to access the elements of my array. Okay, yep, we can go through the code. So let's let's take a little break so that everyone can uh, just re stretch and then we will go through the code for it again. Okay, hang on, let's go, ooh, yeah. All right, we're gonna have a little break and then we're going to go through the code again and then we're going to do a harder piece of code using some of this information that we have done. Okay.
here we go. All right, I'm back. A few of you got the answer as well for this one. Yeah. You take one from bag one, two from bag two, three from bag three, and four from bag four, and then you weigh them because then you can see what's going on. You can see which one is causing the issues. Um, no, because you put, yeah, so you put everything on the scale at once, but then you can see which one will cause the issues depending on which bag you took it out of. Okay, there we go. So exciting. All right, let's do let's do that loop again and then we'll do our harder problem. Okay, let's go through this loop and we'll we'll draw it out. Oh my god, why won't you cooperate with me today? Okay, let's go through it line by line and we can draw it out. Um if everyone's happy with that, is everyone happy to go through it line by line? Whilst you're not replying, I'll start. And then you can always vote as well on the pacing. Okay, let's have a look. So when I go over here, what I'm doing is I am declaring an array, a two-dimensional array that has three rows and four columns. Okay, so what I've done is I've declared an array that has three rows and four columns. Three rows and four columns. Two, three, four. Now I've gone in here and I've initialized it as well. So my first row has the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 in here. So in the indexing is 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3. So these ones are columns up here and these ones here are rows. Okay, then the next row is 5, 6, 7, 8. Then the next row is 9, 10, 11, and 12. Great. Okay, so what it means, I've now got an array, I've declared it, and I've initialized it, so I've put some values into that array. Okay, so now I start on my code. Okay, first line of code, row is equal to zero. Okay, so my row is going to be equal to zero. And now I'm going to go into here and check, is row less than three, which means is zero less than three. Yes, it is. So that means I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, okay, column is equal to zero. Is column less than four? So is zero less than four? Yes, it is. So that means I'm going to go inside this while loop. Okay. Now I want to print percent D and I want to print it at the array. Now my row number right now is still zero and my column is zero. So that means that I'm printing this number over here. Okay, great. Now I'm going to increase column by one. Okay, so that means that my new column is equal to one. So I'm going to go back into this while loop and I'm going to do it ex again. Is one less than four? Yes, it is. So I'm going to go inside the while loop. And now I'm going to have my row is still is equal to zero, but my column is now one. So that means I'm printing out this element over here. Okay, then I increase my column. So now my column becomes two. So my column is now two. Okay, and then I go back in here. And I say, okay, is two less than four? Yes, it is. I'm going to go back inside the while loop. And now I'm going to print it out for zero, two, which is this one here. I'm going to increase it by one, which will make it three. Go back to my while loop. Is three less than four? Yes, it is. I'm going to go in here. And now I'm going to be printing out at array zero, three. So now I'm printing out this one. Great. I'm going to increase that to four. I'm going to go here. Is four less than four? No, it's not. So I'm going to skip this and print a new line, which means I'm going to move on to this new line over here, as you saw. So I'm going to do this next. And then I'm going to increase my row. So now my row is equal to one because it was equal to zero here. Okay, fantastic. So I've done that now and I'm going to go to my outside loop and say, okay, is the new row less than three? Yes, it is. So I'm going to go inside my, I'm going to go inside my while loop, the outer while loop. Oh, it was so pretty, but I erased it by accident. Let me try that again. Okay, is one less than three. Yes, it is. So I'm going to go in here 
I'm going to make column equal to zero again, because if you remember on the last run, my column is equal to three. And I want my column to be back at zero because I've just changed rows. So I wanted to go back, I wanted to reset. Okay, so column is equal to zero again, and I start again. Is zero less than four? Yes, it is. That means I go inside this while loop, and I print out something at row is equal to one, column is equal to zero, which means I print out this item here. And then I increase column by one. Okay, so then that means that my column is now equal to one, because it was zero before. So I'll go back here and say, is one less than four? Yes, it is. So I'll go in here and now I'll print out something at index one, one. Now I'll increase it to two. Go back to the while loop. Is two less than four? Yes, it is. Go inside the while loop. Now I'm printing out something at index one, two. Great, increase it again and compare it again. Is three less than four? Yes, it is. Okay, then I go back in here and now I print out at index one, three. So I print out this one. Increase this by one again and check is four less than four? No, it's not. So that means I'm out of this while loop and I move to this line over here. I print a new line and I increase increment my row. So the row now becomes two and that means that I go back to my start of the while loop for the row. So that means now I'm saying, okay, is two greater than, is two less than three? Yes, it is. So I go inside here and I uh, reset my column again back to zero. And that means I start again and so on and so forth until I finish, okay? So column is equal to zero again and here it is two less than three. Yes, it is, okay? So that means that what happens is that you, you're going to keep going through it until you get this row as well and print out all of these and then you're going to stop because your row is finally going to be, is three less than three? No, it's not. So then you come out of that loop and that means that you finish up with a return zero. And that will give you this printout of this two dimensional grid. How is that? Is that, does that make it more, Tom, can you just do a quick poll if that makes it easier? Okay, and you will be using this a lot. Okay, a lot, a lot, because you will have to comb through two dimensional arrays quite a bit. And this will become your friend, this piece of code here. This while, inside a while, um, and the way you do it, the way you reset them. I mean, you might be doing different things, not just printing out, but the printout is the easiest way to demonstrate what it's doing. Okay, and now I thought we could do um, a harder question, putting some of these things together and using an array of structs which you're using in your assignment. So I thought it could be useful to do a problem that kind of, um, you know, that kind of demonstrates it a little bit more as well. So we're going to use an array of structs. We're going to do something a little bit more difficult. We're going to diagram it out and we're going to draw it out. Okay. Let me show you the problem. I thought we haven't hunted for ice cream today, so it's time to hunt for ice cream. Okay, I'm on the hunt for ice cream. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'd like to explore a certain area in Kingsford to see if I can find ice cream. You can't, there's not many ice cream places in Kingsford. Um, on a 10 by 10 grid. Okay, I'm able to move around this section of Kingsford, left, right, up and down, and want to explore as many places in this section as possible, so as not to miss an ice cream opportunity. Um, okay, once I've explored the section in Kingsford, or I go to the same place more than once, it'll be time to go home. And we can make this problem more complex if we have time with either Tom or Tammy deciding to join me on the hunt. So we might do that as well, depending how we're going for time. Okay, so this problem is harder, uh, but it, it's a lot like assignment one, even the first part of it. So I, I hope that by watching this as well and re-watching it, you can do stage one as well uh, with difficulty. Uh, not with difficulty, without difficulty. Oh my God, Freudian slip. No, without difficulty. I swear, stage one is so doable, super doable. Um, okay, and like assignment one, we will have some starter code um, and it provides us a function. And so just to get you used to, uh, you know, the fact that you do get, you, you get, you can get some functions when you have a starter code. Okay, let's move to get it. G edit. Oh, I hate calling it get it. I don't know why I did that. 
Okay, so in this piece of code, I meant to say without difficulty, I swear. Um, okay, so in this piece of code, there is a, a whole bunch going on, okay? And I wanted to do it so that it looks nasty, um, so that you see it's not actually nasty when you just kind of break it down and read it bit by bit. So let's see what the starter code provides for us, okay? Uh, and then uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit about it. Okay, include, uh, it includes the standard library, uh, no surprises there, or you won't be able to print or scan anything. Um, okay, then we have the dimensions of the section grid that I will explore. And because it's a 10 by 10 grid that doesn't change, I've made it two hash defines, number of rows and number of columns. Okay, and then we have a struct for a player to hold the character name and my position on the map. So what I'm saying is that each player, and I'm the player, I don't know why I'm the player in this ice cream hunt, um, I will have a char name, so I'll have some sort of character for a name, and then we'll have an int position row and an int position column. So basically what I'm keeping track of is the player name and also where that player is located in a coordinate system, okay? Um, okay, and then one helper function, okay, and only because we just did it, so I thought it'd be silly to do it again, but this is the helper function that's going to print out the section map as a 2D grid. Now, it's a void function, which means that uh, it doesn't return anything because it's printing something out, so it's not going to return anything. The function is called print section, okay, and then we're giving it two things. I'm giving it the section, the array, the 2D array that I'm printing out. And I'm also giving it the struct. So the struct player, I've called the struct player Sasha for now, and then we can add other ones if we want. Okay, so what that means is that I'm passing it this struct player that will have a name and a position. So it will have something stored in it that's going to happen. So someone said they're having trouble understanding the spec for assignment one. That could be because we still haven't done some of the things that you need in assignment one, and it will all become a lot more clear um, as we do today, finish today and finish Friday, I promise. And then also tomorrow's, is tomorrow Wednesday? Yeah, tomorrow's Wednesday. Um, I also had to ask Siri what year it is today. So uh, yeah, Wednesday, tomorrow, that's when the live stream is. Um, and the, at 3 p.m. And Tom, if you can just put it in, just the link in the chat again so that we know what's going on. Okay, so if we go down here, this is the helper function that we have. This is the one that's going to print out the, the map. Um, and as you can see, it's exactly the same as basically what we've just done to print out a two-dimensional grid, okay? Um, and the only thing that we need to do is to print out something else in here, okay? Oh, oh God, someone's asked how hard is 15211531. They're very different. You know, once you do 1511, okay, the other subjects do become a lot easier, especially if you've not done computing before. I think 1511 is quite quite hard in that sense because these concepts are very abstract, okay? and you're learning them for the first time. So you, you're gonna need a lot of practice and you're gonna need a lot of repetition to understand what's going on, okay? Please don't despair. Lots of your tutors uh, have also struggled through 1511 and you know, look at them now. Um, honestly, I did terribly in first year computing um, and look at me now. Um, and I went on to do a, a master's of computer engineering and so on and so forth. So I, just give yourself time to learn all these things, ask lots of questions, and don't feel like you're not getting it. You must not be very good at this. That's not, it's, it, that's not how it works. It's just these concepts are very hard to understand at first. Think back to like when you were at school, at primary school, first learning maths. A lot of things were quite difficult, okay? And, and you know, you probably can do quite good maths now. I know all of you are doing maths 1A um, and you know, that's quite advanced maths. So it's like, it's the same thing. You know, coding is hard to start with, but once you understand these concepts, once you understand what an array is, what a list is, how to play with them and how to solve the different types of problems that we have, then um, 
it's going to be a lot easier. So I feel like this is your entry point. This is probably the hardest, uh, well, it's not the hardest, but it's the hardest in terms of gaining that basic understanding. And then after that, uh, you're going to, it's going to be, yeah, you, you, you're going to be, it's going to be a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, 1531 does have a huge group project. Um, it's going really well right now. Okay. Uh, and 1521, Andrew usually takes 1521. So, and someone wrote, he did write the DCC compiler. In fact, Andrew in his first year of teaching was my, um, was my lecturer for Comp 1A, which was C. Um, there you go. All right. Um, because yes, I was also a student here, by the way. So there we go. All right. So let's, let's go back to this. Okay, so I just want to, just a little side note, do not despair. Um, you might feel like you're losing it. Watch the lecture again. Go through the examples again. Go through your lab exercises again. Okay, so just, you know, practice, practice, practice. And we provide you lots of questions to practice. If you have questions, ask them on the forums. Okay. Okay, so uh, we've got our lovely section here that uh, prints the map. That's our helper function. Again, the function is, uh, doesn't return anything. Okay. And it's got, it's called print section and we give it an array. So a two dimensional array, um, called section. Uh, I don't know why I called it section. I keep, I keep calling variables names and then regretting it during the lecture. Apologies. Um, I should just call things better names. And this is a good style choice. Uh, okay, and then I'm giving it the struct player called Sasha. So obviously we're going to have a variable with that of type struct player. Now inside here, we've got the same thing going on that we just did uh, a few minutes ago when we did our printing out our grid. So rows equal to zero, row less than num number of rows, columns equal to zero, colors less than number of columns. And then we're going to print out whatever is inside our two dimensional array um, and increase the column, close, increase the row, um, oh, I've swapped them around. Let me swap them around again. Um, as my own personal thing, I don't like, I usually like to finish with an increment. Just, it lets me see what's going on in each while loop. Um, okay. So let's have a look what we need to write. There's a lot happening in this. So let's see what we can write. Okay. Let's do it. <sighs> okay. All right, so there's, there is already a, a two-dimensional array. That two-dimensional array is, um, is this somewhat inspired from Minesweeper? No, it's inspired by a 2 a.m. weird, like, what should I do as an example for this lecture? Yep, I'm going to go and hunt for ice cream with terrible variable names. Um, okay, uh, so type int. The array is called section and I've given it a size. Okay. Number of rows, number of columns, which we define over here as a 10 by 10. So what I've got is a 10 by 10 diagram, um, a 10 by 10 grid that I will put things into. Okay. Let's see what this to do is initialize the coordinates of where Sasha is standing when she enters the section. Okay. Where on earth do I enter? I think I said where I enter. I haven't said where I enter. I'm going to tell you right now, I would like to enter in the border, bottom, bottom left corner. Let's do bottom left corner. Okay. So if we have a 10 by 10 array, this is, why did I choose 10 by 10? Another regrettable choice now because I don't want to draw a 10 by 10. What's that? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, disaster, 10, terrible. Uh, how many things? One, two, three, four, five. Oh God, six. <sighs> I hate myself right now. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so indexing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If I'm standing in the bottom left hand corner over here, I will be at location, remember row first, column next, so I'll be at 9, 0. If I'm standing at the bottom right corner here, I'll be at location 9, 9. So row 9, and remember rows over here, columns over here. So, uh, and going up like this, and these ones going down like that. Okay, maybe let's do it up here if we're standing over here. Okay, so if I'm entering in at that location, I will be at 9, 9. Okay, so I need to initialize where I'm standing. Okay, let's do that. And this is going to practice using a struct and an array. Um, okay, let's do it. Okay, so where am I located? Who's got ideas what I would do? Who marks your assignment and problem sets? It's a computer that marks your problem sets. And assignments are marked, first they're auto marked and then they're looked at by us to make sure that you get all the possible marks. Okay, so I don't need to scan F the location. It's a good idea, you can scan F the location, but let's say that I'm coming in always from that bottom corner. I could, we could prompt and scan, absolutely. Or we could say that uh, I'm just coming in in the bottom corner always. That's always where I start out. So I always start out at 9-9. Um, nine, nine. Yep, that's right. So I set the current. Okay, excellent. Okay, now my struct, and currently I don't even have anything that has uh, of type struct. So I don't have a variable name in which I'm in the wrong one. I don't have a variable name in which I'm actually the player. So let me declare something of struct player and I'm going to call it Sasha, okay? So now I have a variable named Sasha of type struct player. And now I'm going to initialize it, okay? So Sasha dot name is equal to S. Then I'm going to say Sasha dot, remember we use the dot to access the members of the struct. Then I have a position row and that's going to be equal to nine. And then I have Sasha dot position column, and that's also equal to nine. So that will set me at nine, nine. Okay. And it will also give me a character of S to go with, um, which is very exciting. So that means I'm now ready to take on the world. Maybe. Okay, excellent. So uh, we've done that. Okay. Now, what do we want to do? I want to be able to scan in a command now. Okay, so we've initialized. Uh, we've got a print. So if we're going to print it out, let's go down to our, if we're calling this print function here, let's go down. So we've called the function print section and we've given it section and Sasha. Let's go down to the helper function and see what it's doing. And here we want to be able to print out the S where the player is standing, okay? So how do you think we would do that? How do you think we will print out an S where the player is standing? Or oh, we're not ready for this yet. Are we ready for it? Mike, so true. I'm always drawing grids. Why can't it just be the same as maths? The, yeah. We always like to do things weird in computing. Just wait till you get trees. You know, usually the roots are in the ground, but not for us. We go the opposite way. Yep, so if the counter is equal to the struct, um, then we're gonna print it out. Excellent, okay. That is very good. So once I go in here, what happens is if my position at row column is equal to where I am standing, so it's equal to whatever it is uh, that I'm standing at, that I'm going to print out the character S. So I'm going to check for it with an if statement. I'm going to say if my struct Sasha at position row, 
okay, is equal to the row that I'm currently in and also Sasha at position column, okay, is equal to the column where I'm currently standing in, then I'm going to print out that character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print F and I'm going to print F the percent C and the percent C is going to be whatever is sitting inside Sasha dot name. So it's whatever the character is in here. Okay, then otherwise it's just going to print out a normal number um, and it's going to continue on as if nothing has happened or something has happened. Okay, excellent. Now I'm going to teach you something real weird about scanf. Okay, so what happens if I'm going to, and, and this is really part of the question is to teach you this scanf thing. So the game ends if I come to the same place as I've already or I press control D. Okay, what on earth is control D? What does it mean? What is control D? Have you heard of control D? Control D is another way that you can stop scanf from continuing and you can find out about it in your uh, while loop. Yeah, <laughs> I thought someone wrote end of life the way I read it. I'm like, no, not that bad. It's not very, it's not that dramatic. But yeah, it does. It stands for end of file, okay? Which, you know, you don't really, you don't need to know about it. But scanf returns a few things to us, okay? It returns, we know that it returns a number of things that it's scanned in. Um, and sometimes it can return a minus one or a something else, okay? But it's usually called an end of file. So scanf can return an end of file and the EOF value is hash defined inside uh, one of the standard libraries. So you don't need to worry about it. You don't need to worry what number it stands for. All you need to know is that it's called an EOF, okay? And I'm going to, I might make some notes for it over here. How about that? Just so that, and then I'll put it in the lecture notes on Friday. Okay. So basically, let's, what is an EOF? Um, it is, um, so it might return a minus one when, when used with scanf, uh, but whatever it is, it's referred to, it's hash defined as an end of file. So it's, it's good practice to use EOF, not a number in there. Okay. So we really want to be able to use a hash defined EOF. So you can scan until it's equal to. So what you can do is you can scan F something in, let's say we're going to scan in percent D uh, into something. Okay. Until it's, so while it's not equal to an end of file. So to do that, you would scan something in until the result of this scanf. So whilst it's not equal to an end of file, you keep scanning. And this means that you will keep scanning until control D is pressed. Okay. So control D is what returns an end of file um, to, to the computer. So if we're going to use that in a piece of code, and don't worry, you'll be using it quite a bit. You'll you'll know what's going on. Yeah. So Control C quits the program, whereas Control D just kind of it, it lets it lets us stop come out of the while loop, right? It, it's a special condition that a while loop can take. Okay, we've printed the map. Let's scan in the command. The command could be uh, a left, a right, an up, or a down. So let's do that over here now. Okay, we've, we need something to scan into. So I'm going to have a, ooh, a char direction. Okay, then I'm going to say, where would you like to go? And then I'm going to open my scanf. So while scanf, and I'm going to scan that character. So remember to scan the character in without that uh, pesky white space. I put a space in front of the percent C, comma, and I pop it inside my direction. Okay. Okay, open, no, not open. Okay, so while that's not equal to an end of file, which means that until I've, so I haven't pressed control D, I'll just keep scanning until control D is pressed. Okay, now, okay, 
what we want to do. We want to move the player along. Okay, so let's say if I'm standing over here, okay, well, I'm standing over here, but I'm, let's say I'm standing over here in this 9-9, nine, nine, okay. If a left is pressed, okay, I'm going to move to this column over here, which means what's going to happen? I'm going to stay in the same row, so the row will be the same, but the column will subtract 1, okay, but the column will be column minus 1, okay, and this is why it's really useful to have diagrams, because you can see exactly what these grids are doing, because they're not intuitive to start with, you know, someone said in maths you were used to having a 0, 0 start somewhere else, so it's important to draw these, okay. Now if I move uh, to the other side, okay, so now let's say I'm standing, uh, you know, I've moved over, I'm standing over here now, okay, if I move this way, my row stays the same, yeah, but my column, I add one to my column, excellent, okay. If I move up, okay, if I go up here, then what will happen is my column stays the same, but my row gets less. So it goes from 9 to 8 if I move up. And then if I move down, if I move down, so let's say I'm standing over here and I go down, my column stays the same, but my row increases now. So it adds 1 to it. Yeah? Okay. That's, I've really covered it in ri red writing. Okay, so whilst we're scanning in, let's see. So if my direction, so if my direction that I've just scanned in is going to be equal to moving to the, oh, moving to the left, okay, then I'm going to do something, okay. We saw over here, oh, how unfortunate that this is in the way. Okay, we saw that, I know, if I go to this, okay, if I move to the left, the row stays the same, but the column is going to be minus one, okay, so I don't need to do anything for the row, but I need to subtract one from the column of where I'm standing, so that means that my position where the player is, so Sasha dot position column is going to subtract one, so I'm going to subtract one from it. So I can either do it by saying Sasha dot position column is equal to that minus one, yeah, or I can just do minus minus to subtract one, okay, up to you the way you do it. All right, excellent. Now let's see what happens if my direction is the opposite way. That's the same way, my goodness. I'm not even comparing two numbers. Okay, now we're going the opposite way. So we saw the row stays the same, but the column increases. So the column is going to increase by one, so I'm going to increase it by one. And that's going to change my location in there. Okay, great. What are my other options? Okay, what if the direction is going to be the up? I forgot what that the name of it is, Cavet, Cavet, or something like that. Yeah, it is. There's also a. Yeah, okay. Now, if we're going up, row is minus one, but the column stays the same. Okay, so row is minus the column stays the same. So the only thing I'm changing is my row position. So position row is going to be minus one, okay. And then finally, if I go down, then my position, my row is plus one, my column stays the same. Okay, so what will that do is that will place me wherever wherever I'm going, okay. Now, 
Let's see what that does. Should we see what that does? And then what I might do is I might print it out again. Actually, what else should I do in here? Should we put an else case? We will have else cases. There will be. Yeah. Um, there's a few cases that's yes. Someone's asked one of those cases. What happens if I try to go outside the grid, which I very well could. We will talk about it, but let's do it section by section. Space between bracket and the curly number. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, thank you. I agree. I would fail 1511 style. Um, yeah, I worked for a really long time in a place that doesn't use a space, so I find it really hard to put spaces um, there. Okay, so let's let's see what it does. Let's print it out again after this. Uh, let's call this function again to print it out. It's going to be really messy because I've drawn, I really am just hesitant to move this 10 by 10 grid because I don't want to draw it again. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this across to here. Clear this and let's compile it. Run it. Oh, it took a little bit and I was like, oh, it's going to give me something that I'm not going to like. But no, 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 it was on my side. Oh, amazing. Runtime error. Okay, let's see what's going on. Uninitialized variable accessed. Okay, excellent. All right, fantastic. Let's have a look where we access this uninitialized variable. Okay, so what it means is that somewhere I tried to use something that was not initialized. And let's have a look where that something was. Okay, it was, aha, uh -huh, it was this here. So when I did this, when I called this function, I did not give it any values at all. Okay, so what can we do here? I think we should initialize this array. Let's give it a curly, a curly whirly and make it all zeros. Okay, let's save it. Let's see what it does. So I tried to access it inside this function print section. So what I did is I send an empty array over. Okay. All right, let's have a look and I'll go here. Let me clear this. Let's compile it again and let's, no, oh, I didn't mean to clear it again and let's run it. Okay. So what do we get? Oh, we get a little bit almost perfect. Yeah, almost perfect. I get a beautiful grid, but then this S just kind of replace, push the zero out. It doesn't care for it. Um, and then uh, it's asking me, where would I like to go? Let's, let's say I want to go to the left. Uh, it did move me. So that's nice. I've got movement. So this is very, very nice. Uh, and now I've got no prompts either. So that's very bad because now I don't know what I'm doing. But it seems to be moving if I go up and I go up and I go down. Okay, so it's it's doing something. Oh, it's not going down very well. Oh, because I did a capital V, it should be a little V. Okay, and then I press Control D um, and it exits out for me because that's what I've told it to do. I said keep scanning and then the next thing there is a return zero. So we need to fix a few little things, okay? First of all, we've got a grid, but I've pushed out this grid over here. Um, it's not printing it out right because it's printing out my name and then it's just not, uh, it's not doing anything else. And the issue is over here. I've got this if, so if the position uh, where I am standing matches the, the row and the column of the array, I'm going to print out the character, but then I'm still printing out, I'm still printing out the number as well of that row. So I'm not really, I'm not doing either one or the other. I'm doing both at the same time. <gasps> oh, coins. Oh, I would love that. Oh, just make Mario. I used to love Mario. Okay. So I need to do either one or the other. Okay. I, I can't just do one and then forget about it. So what I need to do is I need to move this inside an else statement. Okay. And now I feel like I've really stuffed my brackets. Nope. Okay, let's try it now. Let's see what it does now. I'll save it and I'll print it again. Then we'll fix our other issues. Okay, let's clear this out. Let's run it, uh, DCC, and then let's run it. 
Oh, I've created an infinite loop. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Just in case anyone was wondering how to do that. There we go. An infinite loop. Fun. Okay, so how did I create this infinite loop? It's because uh, when I get to my name, the column is increasing inside my else statement instead of increasing outside of my else statement. So the column should really be increasing over here, yeah? Because otherwise I kind of, I, it was in the else as opposed to outside on its own, um, actually increasing my column. Okay, let's compile it again and let's run it again. And yay, success, we've got it. Um, so we've got um, we've got a beautiful uh, graph. It's got an S. Okay, now let's try walking. I'm going to walk to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. What if I try to walk down now? If I walk down, I've just walked off the map. Very unfortunate, um, and not not really what I want to be doing. Uh, but there we go. So much fun. Up is working. So up, up, up and to the other side. So all of that is working. I'm moving around. Okay, I'm going to press Control D to finish my input. Okay, let's go back to our code. We're going to do a few more things before we have to finish for today, just as it gets so good. Um, okay, what I want to do is I want to mark where I've been with a one. Okay, did I get my left and right wrong? I could have. <laughs> Um, okay, so I want to mark where I've been and I want to place a one there. So I know that I've already been there. I don't need to go there again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I am going to, yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm going to do that in here, I think. So whilst I'm scanning in, I'm also going to place myself wherever I am. I'm going to give it a one each time I enter the thing. So wherever I've moved, it's going to be a one. All right, let's have a look. Um, so that means that section at my position. So at my position off row. Oh, and my position off column. Okay, now don't worry if you're not keeping up right now. Um, we will go through it again when we recap, so don't worry. Is equal to one, okay? So every time I'm gonna change the map where I've been, so the map at whatever the coordinates are of my position, I'm gonna change it to a one instead. Otherwise, I'm just printing zero in it, yeah? So let's have a look what that does, okay? Let's save it and let's run that to see what it does. You know what? I'm going to erase this. This is just doing my head in now. Yeah. The grid is gone. I'm going to draw it up for you on Friday. Don't worry. I'll draw it neater. Maybe. I won't make any promises I can't keep. Okay. Okay, let's have a look. So I'm going to clear this. Okay, and now let's compile it again. And now let's run it again. Okay, so now if I go up, the map is printed out, but where I used to be is now a one, okay? And then if I go up again, it's going to change it to a one again, because now every time in the while loop, I am also changing my position where I've been to a one. So now I know where I've been. And if I move to the side, I've got a way to explore it out. Oh, could, could do snake. We could do snake as an next assignment. That's fun. Maybe, I don't know. Could be fun. I used to like playing snake. Um, we're not making snake, but I wish we were now. Anyway, okay, uh, back to it. Okay, so now we've got a one, which is really, really nice. So now we've got something else happening in there. Now, the other thing I don't like is that I do not like that it's never asking, prompting me again if I want where I want to go. Like I just have to guess. So I'm going to also move my printf statement, not move it, but I'm going to copy it inside here as well. Okay. So after printing out the map or the section with, that I've explored, I'm going to prompt the user 
for what they want to go again. Okay, excellent. Okay, so now it's going to look a lot nicer. So what that does is uh, if I compile it again and I might clear it and then I'll run it again. So what it's going to do now is it's going to prompt me each time where I want to go. Oh, I've walked off the map. I shouldn't have done that. Ah, I'm still off the map. Okay, so look what it's done. It's because I am in a beautiful, I'm off the map, nothing's happening. And that's why I've just, I've just, I've basically fallen off the cliff. I've gone outside of my area. Um, and if it was locked down, I would have been penalized. Okay, so let's, let's, let's think about what can we do to take care of those cases that are boundaries. Okay. So what, what can we do to check for these boundary conditions? So maybe we should check for them in here before we kind of print ourselves out. Let's check for boundaries. Okay. What are my boundaries? What are my boundaries? Yeah. Yeah. So the boundaries are outside. Out, exactly. So anything more than nine, anything less than zero. Okay. So anything outside of that, um, where we've, we've walked off the map. So if my position, so if my position over here where I'm standing, if I've increased my position and the row is less than zero, okay. I'm going to return it back to zero. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm just going to return it out to zero if it's less than zero. So I'm just going to say that in fact, please bring me back to earth, bring me back to zero, done. Okay. What else can it be? Okay. Then I could also have a, uh, my column position could be less than zero. So my column could be less than zero as well, in which case I'm going to bring that back to zero as well. Okay. All right. Now what happens if we are, if we've gone to the top? Okay. Let's check. Let's check if my row, oh. is greater than or equal to 10. Yeah, greater than. Yeah, let's try. So we have to be outside of nine. You could do a few things with this to make it neater, but I want to separate out these if statements so they become very obvious what we're doing. Okay, so if we're greater than uh, the, uh, yeah, nine. Or if we're going to use our, uh, if we're going to use our hash defined, then it should be greater than or equal to the number of rows. Yeah, because the number of rows is ten. Then I'm going to say that Sasha dot position row, and I'm going to bring it back down. Okay, so I'm going to bring it, and I'm going to use my hash defined. It should be equal to nine, which is n rows minus one. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Well done. Uh, and then the last potential situation is if my position column is greater than or equal to the number of columns. So that means it's greater than or equal to 10. Okay. Then I'm going to bring it back down as well to nine again. Okay, and that will get me oh, that will get me to nine as well, which is quite nice. Okay, so let's see what that does. If I can walk off places now, and then we're going to call it a day there for a bit uh, because we and and then I'll go through it again. Don't worry on Friday. So don't worry. I know it went it went uh, hard and fast at the end there, but I wanted you to have a little bit of background so you can rewatch it and you can play around with the code as well. So in the next few days, play around with the code so you can see what it's doing. All right, let's go off the, I'll go, I'll go left again uh, to start with. Now I'm going to go down. Okay. I'm going to try going down and look at this. I'm not moving when I went down. Excellent. K 
okay if I go up and I'm going to go to the side and then I'm going to go to the side again notice I've stopped saying left or right and I haven't moved okay so I'm standing here and I'm still standing here so now I'm clamping myself out together now if I want to stop here I'll press ctrl D and it will uh, exit me out only because the next line after the while loop is return zero but you could be doing something else all that will do is that will push you out of the while loop okay all right excellent okay we're going to finish there for today uh, let me put up the feedback um, so if you have any feedback please let me know um, don't worry we're going to go through it all again on um, Friday we're going to talk about EOF again on Friday uh, don't worry we're going to recap but I wanted you to have a little bit more background don't forget tomorrow at 3 p.m. we're running this oh I want to say love stream so much again the live stream for assignment one um, so please tune in and we will go through assignment one as well in more detail but hopefully with this problem as well it provides a little bit of um, an example of how to do some of this stuff all right thank you so much everyone I hope that you stay dry today was quite intense and I will see you all on Friday bye